Ole Miss can't win a national championship without them hitting 100% in this position room for 2024. What is that room? We'll tell you next. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, a former staff member at Ole Miss and a 10-year veteran of member of the national media with Yahoo Sports. Thank you very much for joining us. Today on the show, we talk about the most important room, like bar none, most important room this spring for the Ole Miss Rebels. And to be honest, Ole Miss isn't hitting the goals everyone has unless the DB room is performing at an extremely high level. We look at the returners coming back, the limitations that they had in 2023, and how Pete Golding is looking to fix that in 2024. This is the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're free and available on all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day, and a special hello to the everydayers that make the show what it is. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers can join today and get $150 in bonus bets if their first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So the DB room is kind of a save the best for last type situation as we're going through our pre-spring look at every room that's happening in spring football. That's where the best battles are going to happen. That's where the most important play has to come from. That's where lottery tickets are. That's where super athletes are. There's a lot of storylines that are coming out of the DB room going into the spring. But let's go back to the 2023 season. Ole Miss's defense was markedly better than it was in 2022, 2021, just period. The defense gave up about 22 points a game. And basically, Pete Golding, just they feasted on bad to mid offenses throughout 2023. The problem, though, was whenever you were playing against extremely gifted super athlete type teams like the Georgia Bulldogs, Ole Miss had a deficiency at cornerback to where they could not man cover the way they needed to. And a part of that was under the Chris Partridge system and under what DJ Durkin was doing, they were recruiting a certain type of athlete, a zone coverage type of athlete. And those players became the dominant structure in Ole Miss's 3-2-6 defense. Everybody likes Amari Walton. Everybody likes Demontae Prince. Everybody was a big fan of those guys. But they weren't elite cover man-to-man type cornerbacks. And Georgia was able to take advantage of that because Ole Miss was forced to play zone defense, which allowed them to run the ball at will. Ole Miss could not stack the box because they could not man up on the outside. And Georgia was able to basically do whatever they wanted to do. So Pete Golding came into this season. It's like, this has to change. There are certain things that we have to do that is going to take this defense from good to great to elite. And part of that is protecting cornerbacks and also being able to man cover when you need to do it. The defensive line we've covered. That means the defensive backs are going to have to cover a half a second to a second less than they would before because of the pressure that they are going to get. That is one way that they could help the cornerbacks over last year's 10. The other thing is they need to find some more athletes. They need to find players that can man cover. And we talk about Pete Golding and his idea of defensive backs being a certain way. And we are going to talk about the new players they brought in. But one thing that shouldn't be lost is the strength of the secondary was the spine of the defense. And when I say spine, I mean the safety positions, the linebacker positions, honestly, and the interior of the defensive line with like J.J. Pegues. That was kind of the strength of this defense and the reason they were able to take apart bad to mid offenses. And part of that on the back end is Trey Washington. Trey Washington ended up with 83 tackles, three picks, two passes defended, played free safety very well. Now, everybody was concerned whenever he was going to take over that after A.J. Finley moved on to the NFL, 
that Ole Miss was going to be hurting at the free safety position. Well, Trey Washington quite simply made that position his own and played it very, very well. In fact, two out of the top three leading tacklers off of last year's team were safeties. That was the Trey Washington and John Saunders was third as well. They were also leaders on the interception realm. A lot of the good good plays that happened on the defense happened at the safety position. The third leading tackler, by the way, was Dejon Anthony. We'll talk about how Ole Miss is going to try and replace him as well. But this is a player in Trey Washington that Ole Miss recruited. John Saunders was a cornerback that was recruited and transferred out of Miami of Ohio. Um, he played in that slot corner position and played it actually quite well. And this is going to be one of the potential battlegrounds of spring practice. Not necessarily the Trey Washington, because I think Trey Washington is kind of the dude. But the other two safety positions could be really interesting. I mean, when you look at John Saunders, he ended up 65 tackles, three picks, four passes defended. He had the big interception against Texas A&M on the goal line that allowed them to get a stop and eventually win the football game. A lot of that doesn't happen if not for Trey Washington and not for John Saunders. Those players on the back end of the defense and their ability to make plays. I mean, Ole Miss doesn't beat LSU if it isn't for Dejon Anthony's hit. Trey Washington had several picks um, over the course of the season. I think he even had one against Arkansas as well, or maybe that was John Saunders. Somebody had a big pick against Arkansas as well. This team feasted on bad to mid offenses. The question for Ole Miss, for them to achieve the goals that they have set for them, is that it moves up to the next level. Ole Miss's defense needs to feast on all the way up to good offenses. And great offenses need to work against Ole Miss's defense. That's the plan. That is what Pete Golding is building at Ole Miss. We are going to talk about some new transfers that came in. I really like them. We're going to talk about some lottery tickets coming up. We're going to talk about some G5 guys that are moving up because just like John Saunders, you can do that. You don't want to hold defense that are G5 guys, but you can move up because players can move up as well. Ole Miss's defense last year was better than at any point since, what, 2015? 2014, that ballpark, and it can only get better. That's the crazy thing. This defense gave up, I think, 22.8 points a game a year ago. Far cry from Wesley McGriff was getting into shootouts with Southern Illinois. It's a far cry from that moment. But Ole Miss's defense is going to get better because they brought in transfers from Power 5 teams, starters on Power 5 teams, some really good players coming in. They got more athletic, and they used the transfer portal to get better on the defensive line and at linebacker that will allow them to do a little bit different stuff. You can put the corners on an island on them more because you know the defensive line and the linebackers are going to get home. Athletic Athletes that can really run. John Saunders, he may not be able to run enough to play outside corner in the SEC, he can play some really good slot corner. And there's some other options that he is going to have to compete with. It isn't just a cut and dry type thing. So we'll see on these players that are returning and exactly, I don't know, how they do moving it through spring. This is going to be fantastic. All of the really fun battles in spring practice are going to be in the DB room, in my opinion. Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen of the day. We're just getting started. We look at the cornerbacks specifically and how Pete Golding is trying to solve their man coverage problems from a year ago. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain that vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 points for your number one dry, ride or die, 
you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with EJ's, eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Locked On's launched its first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. So at cornerback is interesting. We mentioned Zamari Walton. We mentioned Deontay, DeAndre Prince. Ole Miss is rebuilding the cornerback portion of this room. More questions than answers so far for Ole Miss on this side of the room. Now, athletically, Ole Miss has upgraded across the board. And Trey Amos' coverage skills has shown and has been proven to be effective at the college level. I mean, he played at Alabama a year ago. He was going to start this year. He was playing behind two first-round picks a year ago. He is a transfer in from the University of Louisiana, where he played defensive back. Nick Saban saw him and granted him a transfer. Now, if anybody knows anything at all, the DB room at Alabama was Nick Saban's baby. You did not get to play in that room if you could not play, and Nick Saban had personal approval of everybody that walked in. Nick Saban picked this player to come into the University of Alabama. He transferred in. In the SEC championship game, he got hurt. Or um, Kool-Aid McKinstry got hurt, I should say. Trey Amos was forced to come in against the Georgia Bulldogs and played exceptionally well. Trey Amos last year had 12 tackles only, but he had five passes defensed. And in that sparing time that he got in, the five passes defensed is important. Now, if you look at Ole Miss's stats, the starters on Ole Miss's team had like seven or eight passes defense per player. This is a guy with really good man coverage um, skills, and he has built his bones on being able to do it. Trey Amos has a chance to be the alpha dog in the Ole Miss cornerback room. I'm excited about what he can do there. Now, there's other players on Ole Miss's roster at the moment, like Amorian Walker, who has a chance to play a good bit, but I think Gr Chris Graves is potentially going to be the starter. He is the player that against Georgia, got put on the field more often than not and got the start because of his man coverage ability. He was just a true freshman at that point, or maybe a redshirt freshman. And he played against the number one team in the country at night, primetime game on ESPN, the whole nine yards as that young of a player because of his man coverage ability. And that also kind of lets you know exactly where the other players sat in doing that. Now, did that matter very much? Not too much. Chris Graves probably had a fairly rough night, but he is a guy that is going to learn from that experience. And you have Trey Amos on one side and Chris Graves on the other, potentially. I think you're going to be in pretty good shape. I think the man coverage ability there the and the amount of talent that's on the defensive line and at linebackers I think the outside is going to be in pretty good shape. Now, backing it up, you have Amorian Walker, the super combine warrior transfer from the University of Mississippi, Michigan. He um, is wearing number one, by the way. That kind of lets you know exactly what the staff thinks of him because I have a theory on single-digit numbers for newcomers. Not players that are here and established for newcomers. If you want to know what a coach thinks of a player, See if he gets a, a single-digit number. Otherwise, you're going to have to work for it, and you're going to have to work up and move up to that single-digit number. But if you're a newcomer that gets it immediately, that tells you what they think of your ability. And Morian Walker getting that number one, that's kind of a big deal to me. Now, Cedric Beavers is a junior college cornerback from Jones County Community College, or junior college, one of the two, I forget. Um, 
that has a chance to be really good. He's an extremely smooth player. He can make all the plays. I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of an adjustment, but if you remember 20 years ago, if you're my age and above, there were players in the Mississippi Junior College system that would be just like this. Like Fred Smoot would be an example of that. Tony Bridges would be an example of that. Players that have excelled at the junior college level got up and became an immediate number one cornerback at the college level. I think Cedric Beavers, we need to be on the watch out for that because if you look at his huddle film, this is a smooth athlete. It looks like he is effortless running um, around. He also can play physical. He does a lot of the stuff that you want to see from a cornerback. I, I want to see ball skills in the spring. I want to see how he matches up against this wide receiving core because all of these cornerbacks, they're not going to see any receivers in the course of a season that's going to be harder than the receivers that they see on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of practice each week. So I do think this spring is going to be it's going to be a battle, and the one-on-one periods are going to be absolutely fantastic. Which DB is holding, which cornerback specifically is holding their own on one-on-ones? On seven-on-seven, where you actually have to cover for a long period of time, which DBs are holding their own against Trey Harris, against Juice Wells, against Jordan Watkins, against Deion Smith, Marquise Willis? against Caden Prescorm, whenever all of these weapons that are happening out there at wide receiver, which DBs are able to hold their own with this group? Because I guarantee you, the group they're going to see on Saturdays is not going to be as good as the one they're seeing during the course of the week. And because of that, I think this DB room has a chance to get better and better and better. And it's probably a good thing that over the course of the season, the season really kicks off. Now, there's losable games. I'm not saying there's not, but I think LSU is like game six or seven. That's kind of the disembarkment point of the season. That's the point where we start figuring out if Ole Miss is going to make the playoff, which is the goal. They're completely all in at making the playoff. They need to do it. So you have all of spring to get the DBs right. And players like Amorian Walker, players like Trey Amos, players like Cedric Beavers, They're going to have to learn how everything operates. And the spring can be difficult and slow. That's that's the reason there's some time a learning curve. And it's also the reason why it's good for a signee to come in at mid-year. But they need to do the best they can to be in the best possible situation so that when fall starts, they're ready to hit the ground running. Cornerback positions. These four players that I named. Ole Miss is either going to go up to the national championship or they're going to miss the playoff, and a lot of it is going to come from the cornerback position, especially in the era, this era of college football. If your cornerback positions, if you hit on every single one of them and they're exactly what they need to be, this is a defense that's not going to give up much more than 12 points a game. Seriously. If the cornerback struggles, you might be looking at somewhat similar to what Ole Miss gave up this year, which means I think the results will be somewhat close to what this year's was. This year's schedule is a little bit easier, but Ole Miss should be able to get away, I guess you could say, with 24 points a game. You don't want that. You prefer the 12, the other side of the coin, but I think I think that's the ceiling and floor of this defense. The ceiling um, of what Ole Miss can be is a 12-point-per-game defense and a leader or up there on the list for scoring defense in the country. The floor is probably about where Ole Miss was a year ago. And we'll see exactly how that goes. I mean, when you look at the cornerback position, absolutely – Nuts with talent, lots of man coverage ability. You got JUCOs that are interesting. So many position battles are going to happen on the back end of this defense during the course of the spring that everybody should be paying attention to. I know we're not talking about it because, you know, Jackson Dart's good, Trey Harris. There's weapons all over the place. There's plenty of shining things. But if you were looking for areas that you need to be paying attention to, 
it's on the back end of this defense. And we'll see exactly how they go. Still more to come on Locked On Ole Miss, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Some transfers from 2023 are set to break out, and that's good because players like Jaden Kennedy can be a lottery ticket for the Ole Miss Rebels. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150. If your bet wins, bet on all your NFL, NBA players and teams with quick bets, same game parlays, exclusive props. They've got a ton of the ways that you can look in and bet on your favorite teams. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to shoot your shot. FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day, and shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. For your second listen, go to the Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 stream channel. Be part of history. All right, so we need to look at the safety part because as we said a year ago, that was the kind of the strength of the defense, especially the secondary. And Trey Washington and John Saunders are returning, two players that are very good and performed extremely well during the season. But, Ole Miss upgraded that area in a big way, and Ole Miss seemingly added safety after safety after safety during the offseason. And because of that, it's one of those things that I just said before the break. This position group is going to be where all the battles are, positionally speaking, during spring practice. One of the players that I think you need to pay attention to is Yam Banks. Yam Banks was a cornerback at South Alabama. Now, these are the 2022 stats before, I guess, he got, they quit throwing at him. He ended up with 50 tackles, six picks, and 11 passes defended. He's a really good football player. If you ask me, one of these players that I'm about to mention is the most candidate to be the next Dejon Anthony. Um, They have an excellent chance of doing that. This year, his production dropped down just a little bit. He transferred out. He's originally from Ridgeland, Mississippi. Um, really, really good football player, but we'll see how he goes. Another player is Lewis Moore. I love Lewis Moore as a player. He is my dude. He's the guy that I think has a chance to do the Dejon Anthony thing and become an important cog of the back three of the safeties in that DB room. Remember, all of these players that I'm talking about, and I'm going to miss players during this, and please do not be offended by that, but there's just there's so many, five, five positions. If you go too deep, I mean, there's a ton of names that are coming up. But if you look at the safety position, you know, John Saunders and Trey Washington. Then you have Key Lawrence, the transfer in from Oklahoma. Lewis Moore, Yam Banks. You end up with players that you already had. You've got Jaden Kennedy, who we're going to talk about in just a second. You have the players that can go outside, can go inside, the versatility to where you can move players around. There's a lot of great athletes that have been recruited to play defensive back. I really like Lewis Moore. I really like Ian Banks, and I like Key Lawrence. But the question is, you have a Trey Washington. You have a John Saunders somebody is going to have to sit is my point. And that is good news because I do think it's like I said, Ole Miss has to hit a hundred percent in the secondary, um, at least in the top five positions for a national championship to be a thing. It has to, there can, there can be no misses. There can be no, Oh, that was close. We were almost there. No, it, 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 this position has to be perfect. Now, I'm not saying that Ole Miss has a chance to be LSU because they, they don't have a chance to be LSU. But if you told me there was a weakness that by the end of the year started to get exposed, 
I can see where Oklahoma and LSU and Georgia start to take advantage of that. So Ole Miss does need to hit 100%. And bringing all these players in means that they likely are. I see a situation to where it's like Yam Banks and John Saunders in the slot corner. Key Lawrence is playing the Dejon Anthony role uh, along with others. Trey Washington's sitting back there as well. Jaden Kennedy, um, who we need to talk about here in just a second, rises up. I see a situation where this defensive back room can be very good because of what happens up in front of them and the ball skills that all of them as basic former cornerbacks have. Now, let's talk Jaden Kennedy. He's the lottery ticket um, for the Ole Miss defensive backfield. In 2021, he was um, not an All-American. He was All-American Conference um, in his freshman year as a slot corner type or he was on the outside. He got moved into slot corner his second year, um, which in the middle of the year, towards the end of the year, he had a pretty serious knee injury, okay? He ended up transferring, real similar type situation to Logan Diggs. He got to Ole Miss, ended up getting on the field some, but he wasn't in a position to start. But if his knee heals, and we know how I feel about ACL injuries, okay? We know how I feel about that. It's a 12 to 18 month injury. This is going to be a case study in that. Now, it could be a situation. I think it was Tim Simon back under Houston Nutt um, 10 years ago where a knee injury, actually, there were nerves that got cut and things like that. And he was never the same athlete. That's possible in the situation. But if it's just a ligament, if just a ligament, if it's just something like that to where it can be repaired, by now, he should be 100% in time for spring practice, which there could be a chance that he ends up taking a John Saunders role in that slot corner position. I do not think after that knee injury, he is going to run well enough to play on the outside. So it's inside or safety. So you could see a situation where Jaden Kennedy is playing back with Key Lawrence and Trey Washington, or he could be playing the slot corner type position. But he is an absolute lottery ticket. If you go back to 2021, his freshman year, 55 tackles, two picks, three passes defended for the two-line green wave. Got the recognition that everybody knew about. And when we interviewed um, Jerry Smith with the tight two-line green wave a year ago, he talked about this player specifically and how good of a piece he'll be eventually for the Ole Miss Rebels. He's a good athlete. So he's absolutely a lottery ticket for Ole Miss this year. And we'll start to find out in spring. Jaden Kennedy, if he can get through the mental stuff, if he's structurally fine, I think he'll be at a point where he is adding at least depth to an already deep defense. So we talk about how Ole Miss and Pete Golding is going to try and overcome the weaknesses of a defense that was pretty good in 2023. This is how. They beefed up the defensive line and linebackers to rush the passer. Linebackers got a little bit bigger to stop the run, and they got super athletes to play on the outside to man cover more. So the defense is going to change just a little bit, but they're still going to do some zone principles as well. Remember, Pete Golding has spent five years at Alabama. The matchup zone that Alabama has played for the better part of the last 17 years, that's now in his DNA. So they're going to do a little bit of zone, a little bit of man. It's going to look the same either way you do it. And basically that matchup zone is basically pass off type features to the next player, but it's man coverage through it. So we'll see how that goes. If Ole Miss wins the national championship, the safety, the safety and cornerback group is outstanding. If Ole Miss is just very good, the safety and cornerback room is just very good. This is where all of the position battles in spring practice are going to happen. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen. Every day is we have Barrett Salee and Chris Childers slated for this weekend, and we wait for the most anticipated football season ever, and you can hear it all here. Just so everybody knows, starting Friday at about 2.30 Eastern time till about Monday at noon, no 
audio is going to go up to the podcast audio feed. We are migrating over hosts. They're doing that at that time. Those videos should show up after Monday at noon. If you want those videos during the weekend, the Barrett Salee, the Chris Childers, that, go to the YouTube page. You can catch it there as well. So just understand that from about 2.30 Friday till about noon Monday, they are not going to have any videos. So for your second listen, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. For your second listen, go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 stream channel. For those of you on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Howdy tidy, everyone.